I started my search for a martial art to learn out of pure interest inspired by movies and games. One day, I stumbled upon a post on Facebook about a new school called Bulldog Martial Arts. It was being started by someone in the neighborhood, which immediately piqued my interest. Although I had never heard of the art that they taught there, it sounded similar enough to karate, so I decided to attend. This decision is one of the best I have ever made. It introduced me to the magical world of Kajakimbo and martial arts in Middle Tennessee. Despite all I have learned about martial arts and the practical self-defense, the people I have met, the connections I have formed, and the memories I share with my class are what have stayed with me the most. Not only have I been taught to fight physically, but I have also been taught emotionally and spiritually. They have taught me life lessons, how to stand up for what I believe in, and without them, I know I would not be the same person I am today. It is undeniable that the impact we have had on each other is noticeable in all our lives, and it has created the best version of all of us. Kajikimbo has always been a lesser known martial art, especially as you move further east in the United States. Bulldog martial arts is revolutionary as it was the first school to introduce this Hawaiian art to Middle Tennessee. Despite its geographical seclusion, Kajikimbo connects people from Hawaii to California, Texas, and Tennessee, creating a family stretching beyond the distance. Throughout its history, present, and future, Kajikimbo is and will always be a practical and brutal martial art that prides itself on its students' strength, discipline, and spirit. Truly, Kajikimbo creates a sense of family that stretches across the globe. Let's start at the very beginning. One of the highest values in Kajakimbo is our history, our lineage. We believe that we are here today because of those who began Kajakimbo and passed it down through generations to eventually land on us. For this reason, those who study Kajakimbo hold their teachers and their predecessors in very high esteem. For us in Kajakimbo, lineage is extremely important because it's how we trace ourselves back. We take pride in what we do and uh, the fact that we are Kaja Kimball, not you know, any Tom, Dick, or Harry can just show up, throw a black gi on and say, I'm Kaja Kimball. If you cannot trace yourself back to Sijo, which means creator, uh, founder, if you cannot trace yourself back to Adriano Imperato in some way, shape, or form, you're not Kaja Kimball. With this value in mind, we're gonna go back in time to study the fascinating story of how Kajikimbo came to be. Kajikimbo was founded in the Palama Settlement, an area named after the Palama Chapel, which was established in 1896. It was part of the settlement house movement in 1890s America, created as a way to combat the problem of rampant city slums. These houses served as gathering places for fostering relationships that would serve as the foundation for stronger, healthier communities. This area of Honolulu was underdeveloped. At the time, it was composed mainly of low-framed buildings with corrugated iron roofs. Streets were unpaved and horse-drawn vehicles with the ox cart were a common sight. Thanks to the Palama Chapel, good work was being done in the area. Then, disaster struck. On January 20th, 1900, an incident occurred that changed the role and function of the Palama Chapel forever. Five cases of bubonic plague were reported in Chinatown. Amidst the ensuing panic, the city attempted to eradicate the disease by setting fire to the plague victims' homes. The fire raged out of control, burning down four blocks of buildings, left homeless thousands of Chinatown residents, most of whom were impoverished immigrants from Asia and their families, were forced to seek housing elsewhere, eventually crowding into hastily built frames and tenements. This disaster had a terrible effect on the Palama settlement. The population of the settlement increased as people fled from Chinatown, and the standard of living decreased as the already scarce resources were spread even thinner. The Palama settlement would feel this blow throughout the next half century. This is the world the founders grew up in, and it was troubled. And when they returned from the war, it only got worse. 
As new immigrants arrive from the Pacific Islands and Southeast Asia, together with changing values and mindsets associated with post-war society, the Palama settlement must address new issues. Substance abuse, domestic violence, gang involvement, teen pregnancy, and at-risk use now utilize much of the settlement's limited resources. The settlement is, as always, challenged. It was a really bad neighborhood. These guys did it to protect their neighborhood, really. There were five founders that worked together. It was Adriano Imperato, there was Chang, there was Ordinez, Frank Ordinez, Joe Hulk. Adriano Imperato is credited as the official founder of Kajakimbo and is the face of the system. He started his training in martial arts at an early age, starting with boxing before eventually learning Eskrima and Judo. His main style he would discover at the age of 20 in Kempo Karate, learning under Professor William K.S. Chow. Emperado studied daily and eventually became Chow's first black belt and chief instructor. During the developmental years of Kajakimbo, Emperado would train with the other four co-founders during the day and then teach classes for Chow in the evening. They formed a group called the Black Belt Society and trained to improve each other with their distinct styles. At the end of the day, here's the bottom line. It is crucial to approach martial arts with respect and responsibility. Martial arts can be dangerous, especially those meant for self-defense. Like any weapon, when used irresponsibly, there can be disastrous consequences. However, when used responsibly, it can be a source for good. In Kajikimbo, you don't train for any belt or any trophy. You train to be able to defend what you hold dear. You train so that you can keep your family and your friends safe. Many lessons focus on making intelligent choices in dangerous situations, how to stay aware or what to do when you are attacked. As corny as it sounds, training in Kajikimbo or any martial art helps you become the closest you can be to a real superhero. And that responsibility and sense of duty you see in those superhero movies become part of your life. When I train, I'm not motivated by anger or hate or the want to hurt someone. I'm motivated by love and a desire to keep what I love safe. You're learning about Kaju Kembo now. You're learning, you're learning uh, history. You're learning about personal history. You're learning about its effectiveness. And what I, what I want you to take away from this is how it's not just a, a, a thing you do. That is the main thing about uh, about Kajukembo that we all want people to understand is that this isn't just a hobby. This isn't just, this is a lifestyle and it can be a lifestyle that will improve anybody's life and it doesn't matter what age they are. I've got students who are 50, 55, in their late 50s. I had students who were a, a little older than that. Um, and I've had students that were three years old. Um, so learn, learn to see how we are so different and try to see how you can apply that to your life. You've heard, um, you know, all about Kaju Kembo, or, or at least got an introduction to Kaju Kembo uh, from, from those of us that are, are practicing. I, I, would, I would surmise to you that um, this, this is bigger than martial arts. Uh, this is bigger than um, going to another dojo. This is family. This is connected. Um, in personal life, um, we give each other advice. Um, we're there to, to pick ourselves uh, up when we're down. And when we're up, we are, you know, uh, applauding on the sideline for, for those um, events. This is a life. Um, uh, it's, it's a fantastic uh, martial arts. And most importantly, it's a fantastic family.